Hey, it's Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop. Thanks for joining me for this week's episode of the Sonic Scoop podcast. And today, I want to do an episode that I've been meaning to do for a while, but I was worried. Is it still relevant? I think it is. You tell me. And the big topic is why I stopped stealing music and also why I stopped stealing plugins. I stopped stealing both of those a long time ago, um, well more than a decade. How long has it been? My goodness. I stopped stealing those things quite a bit back, but... When I used to talk to people about this, sometimes younger people, they'd be like, you just don't understand what it's like to be young and not have a lot of money and all the cool kids are doing it. And I'd say to them, no, you don't understand. I come from the Napster and LimeWire generation. I was stealing music and feeling justified for it when you were in your jammies. So if there's somebody who knows something about stealing music, it's me and the entire millennial generation who were taught that Napster... LimeWire, those are the big ones back then, and then BitTorrent, stealing records, great thing to do, because you were sticking it to the man. I found out before too long that I wasn't sticking it to the man. The man is going to do just fine. If the man can't make money doing one thing, the man will just make money doing something else. The people you end up sticking it to when you buy, when you steal, instead of buying your favorite music, are the people who make the music, the actual artists who you supposedly know and love and connect with and support and all that stuff. I wish that when I was 15 or 16, whenever those things started uh, hit, that I didn't start stealing music and feeling justified for it. You know, you feel justified for these reasons because back then a CD could be 17 or $20. Back when that was a lot of money. That's actually probably like $40 today or something like that. And it just like, it was, it was so cool. You could, there's no way to hear music in advance. So a lot of us would kind of get into stealing music by saying, oh, I'm just doing it to try this stuff. And if I really like it, then I'll buy it. No, you're not going to. <laughs> no, you already have it. Oh, but I'll buy a t-shirt. Okay. So you've turned your favorite artists into, into t-shirt salespeople instead of music salespeople. Um, why, why, why not buy the record? I mean, the record they probably have a better margin on it than the t-shirt. And are you really going to buy the t-shirt? Are you really going to wear the t-shirt? No, a lot of people end up ended up just stealing a bunch of stuff. I wonder if this is relevant anymore, because I don't know if stealing music is even that big of a thing for the kids anymore. If you are one of the kids, please let me know if stealing music is a thing that people still do. But I think that a lot of people got into that. One thing that does come up on the channel sometimes is people asking about cracks and cracked plugins and Hey, is there a way to get a cracked version of that universal audio stuff or whatever it is on there? That universal audio stuff is very hard to crack. And I'll tell you too why I stopped stealing cracked plugins and why I think you should stop stealing plugins too. Not only because it's the right thing to do and all of that good stuff, and it is, but also because it's better for you to stop right now. And I think there are two major mindset blocks that are going to occur when you feel justified in stealing music or stealing plugins that you are going to overcome as soon as you stop feeling justified in doing it, as soon as you stop doing it. So I guess this is another way that we've been doing this theme lately, the two biggest things. Here are the two biggest mindset obstacles that are going to hold you back in your career that you can smash through by changing and reframing your thinking about feeling justified to stealing the stuff that other people make. Before we get into it, big shout out to our sponsors. Uh, biggest sponsor being you. How do you sponsor this podcast? You know already. By smashing the like button and or subscribing, hitting the notifications bell, making sure you don't miss any more great ones like this. If you're on the YouTubes, if you are listening to the audio-only version, please consider us giving a five-star rating review on Apple Podcasts or wherever else you get your podcast. It really does help spread the word. Big shout out and thanks to Sound Toys, making plugins that you should absolutely buy because they're wonderful. And if you want to try them for free, you can for 30 days over at soundtoys.com. Absolutely wonderful, generous policy there from those guys. Big thanks also to Steinberg, makers of Cubase and Nuendo some, uh, and WaveLab, some great DAWs for music making. Uh, also makers of some great interfaces. Speaking of interfaces, Focusrite, sponsoring this episode all month. Uh, Focusrite, makers of some great pre's like the Claret that I'm talking into right now. All right, let's get into it. Why are these two big mindset blocks going to hold you back? Well, one, if you end up never paying for music, how are you supposed to feel justified charging people for music? 
I mean, I'm assuming that you're in a place where you maybe want to do this as a profession. And if not, maybe a side hustle or maybe something that just kind of pays itself back or maybe something where people show that they just value what they're doing, what you're doing. And one of the ways they can show that they value what you're doing is by paying you lip service and saying, oh, so great, great. Why don't you? And, and kind words are nice, especially if they're sincere and heartfelt and all that stuff. But another way for people to show that they really value what you're doing is for them to give up something so that you can have something because they value what you're doing enough that they'd be willing to give something up for it. And that could be something as simple as a dollar or $5 or $20 or $40. But that is how people really show that they value something, that they're willing to prioritize it over other things. So if you're not willing to do that for others, how are you going to go out there confidently and make that ask of others? So it's a real problem if you want to get into selling what you do. And even if you don't want to go into a career in music, no matter what you do for a living, there's some selling of a product in some way, even if you're not the one directly doing the selling. Even if you're a a teacher and you're selling the kids on the idea that they should be prioritizing education over other things in their lives. Whatever it is, sales is involved. If you're not willing to give up something for music, how are you going to ask people to give up something for music? There's also this problem. This one comes with the cracked plugins thing. This trap that you're in, you haven't gotten out of the gear sluts mentality, the mentality of I need the next thing so I can do it. And what's holding me back from not being able to do it is I don't have all the stuff and other people have all the stuff and that's why they're getting the great sounds. And if I had the stuff too, then I could get great sounds. And you're chasing the stuff. You're not chasing technical development in yourself and you're not chasing satisfaction with this record isn't perfect, but no records are perfect. And this record is good enough for us to drop so we can start making the next record and keep on going with a habit of making music and putting it out there. And that's really hard to do when you're in the stuff focused mentality. And when someone is out there stealing plugins and taking this time to steal plugins so they can get the cracked thing on this weird website that's maybe going to infect their computer with pop-up pornography or whatever it is. <laughs> When you're in that mindset, you're not focusing on the things that are actually going to make you better. You're taking time, a lot of time, and taking some risk to focus on the things that don't matter as much. There's also the other stuff, the ephemeral, you're making the world a better place by supporting people who are doing awesome things. And that's true too. And you should do it for those reasons. But you should also do this for selfish reasons. A, improve your ability to sell by actually buying stuff. Before I ever sold my first online course, and and I've brought in a decent amount of revenue selling online courses, but before I ever do, I bought an online course. I never thought I'd be the kind of person to buy an online course. I bought one. It was extremely helpful. I've since bought many. And whenever I sell a whole bunch of courses, like have a big promotion like Black Friday, I buy myself a bunch of courses. Because I want to have the experience of giving someone money for creating something that was awesome that helped me. And it actually helps me go out out there with confidence and say, hey man, check out my course. It's totally going to help you. Just like I know that these other courses helped me in my life. And you can do the same thing with music. You can also do the same thing with your services. If you're in a place where You're not stealing from people who are doing the service of making you plugins. (laughs) It's much easier to go out there and say, hey, I'm doing something valuable. You should give up something for what I'm going to do for you. Just like I give up something for these things that help me in my craft. But also because it gets you out of the mentality of chasing the stuff and I have to get all the stuff and all of that. And instead puts the focus back on you making some money through music, doing what you do right now, and then reinvesting those funds into some of the stuff. If the stuff is going to make your life more fun or help you get to the sounds more easily or make the whole process easier and better. So I hope that's useful. Obviously, another big thing in why it's not as much 
something that people do anymore is because some of this anti-piracy stuff has gotten better. And I think there's been a big shift away from where it was 20 years ago, around the year 2000, when the average person in their teens or 20s found downloading music to be the most convenient and cost-effective thing to do. One of the great things that happened to the industry is that services like Spotify, Pandora, Apple Music, all these services, all of a sudden made paying for music the cheap, easy, convenient approach. And I would argue that the only problem with those services right now is that they're too cheap. Apple Music, any song I want at any time for $10 a month? Oh my goodness, if I had that when I was a kid, geez louise, no one would have ever stolen anything. Remarkable. The only problem is I wish that these services would pay artists more, and the only way for them to do that is to double their prices. But the one problem that they have in this is if they go to double their prices, to some people, all of a sudden, the whole piracy thing is going to seem attractive again. That's what they're scared of. They're scared if we raise our prices, will people just go and go to these free services? And only if we have a culture of, no, that's lame, and if you do that, you're a loser, which is what our culture should say, if you're stealing money from musicians, you're a loser. Stop doing that, <laughs> right? Unless our culture really says that and reinforces that, then yeah, maybe people do go that route. So this ties back into something I've been talking about a bunch, which is gratitude, being grateful for how awesome it is that you can get any song you want at a fidelity that is inarguably way better than tape cassette. And I have to say, even vinyl records, it's more accurate to the source if you're listening to like a 320 kilobits per second MP3 or whatever is truer to the source than vinyl as perceived by the human ear. It is like the best sounding format ever for a price that's lower than ever in human history. I mean, the access to music we have is awesome. Incredible. And if it was double or triple what it costs me right now, man, that would still be worthwhile. So I think that's something to think about. That there's a responsibility on the part of the makers of these things to make it hard to steal and make their offerings so awesome that it seems dumb to steal, like why would you? So that's on the manufacturers to do. But it's also on us as individuals to treat others and ourselves right by not being like, doesn't it suck to look in the face of a liar when you look in the mirror? <laughs> right? Isn't that awful? We've all done it. So that's another big thing. And then another big thing is the culture of just like, if your friends tell you about how they stole something and it was awesome, you'd be like, why are you doing that? You're a jerk. What? Why should I trust you around my beer? <laughs> How are you, my friend? You know, what What are you going to steal from me? You know, so I trust you around my girlfriend or boyfriend or daughter or whatever it is. So those are some things to think about. All right. I hope that one's useful to you. Big shout out and thanks as always to you. Tell me, how about you? Did you used to steal music? Did you stop? Are you still doing it? Why do you feel justified if you do? I'll argue with you down there. I promise. Um, or tell me why you stopped. So and tell me when you stopped. Tell me why you used to. I want to hear about, hit the comments down below if you're on the YouTube version, or if you are on a podcast version like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, that kind of stuff, consider giving us a five-star rating review. It really does help spread the word. Big thanks to our sponsors, which include Sound Toys, makers of great plugins that you can try out for free for 30 days over at soundtoys.com. Big thanks to Focusrite, making excellent interfaces like the Claret Pre I'm talking to right now. And big thanks to Steinberg, makers of Cubase, Nuendo, WaveLab, and their own great interfaces. They are sponsoring a free series on hip-hop production with Paul Willie Green Womack right now on this channel. You got to check it out. He's a great dude and he's making some great tracks. Thanks for hanging out with me. This has been Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop. See you next time.